What's up, spacers? This is your specialist, the space technician. So, NASA's boldest mission ever, to scoop Mars rocks and bring them home, just got blistered by auditors. The February 2024 Inspector General report reveals Mars sample return is careening off the rails before it even left the launch pad. This staggeringly complex flagship mission carrying the first pristine Red Planet geologic samples back to eager scientists has already gone triple budget and fallen years behind schedule. And the worst part, nearly all the early missteps and mess-ups were avoidable. Unforced errors abound according to the detailed audit. It highlights massive risks still lurking further down the road for MSR's intricate space ops ballet. So, is NASA leadership about to eat the seven-plus billion dollars it dumped into this decade-long sample return dream? Or will they double down on the overly ambitious architecture, despite the agency's spotty track record delivering projects this sky-high in cost, risk, and complexity? Get cozy, folks, because one way or the other, Mars sample returns and pending decisions seem poised to have earth-shaking ripples across NASA for years. Will the agency's white whales ever swim home? Or does another painful harpooning loom on the horizon? Let's find out. But before we get into it, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to never miss out on our journey to the final frontier. All right, let's get into it. Remember, strapping in is optional, but recommended. So, to quickly recap for those just joining, NASA's Mars Sample Return Program, or MSR for short, aims to bring back the first ever rock and dirt samples from Mars in the early 2030s. This would allow scientists to analyze Martian soil in well-equipped labs on Earth, versus trying to study it using only the instruments we can send to Mars. There are a few different hardware pieces that make MSR possible. First is a rover called Perseverance that is already operating on Mars to collect samples. Perseverance stores these geologically interesting samples in small tubes on the surface. The next piece is called the Sample Retrieval Lander. As the name suggests, this is a special spacecraft that will land on Mars starting around 2030. It will carry a robotic arm to pick up these collected sample tubes and transfer them into the Mars Ascent vehicle. Essentially, a mini-rocket that will blast the container off the Martian surface. Once in orbit around Mars, an Earth return orbiter provided by the European Space Agency will locate the small sample container, capture it, and secure it for the journey home. Inside part of this orbiter is the Capture, Containment, and Return System, or CCRS. This critical component, built by NASA, will retrieve the sample capsule in space and seal it up for safe entry into Earth's atmosphere years later, around 2033. There are also two small helicopters included as a backup sample retrieval system, if Perseverance can't move around anymore. Woof. Even just listing the different pieces that have to work together perfectly make it clear why this is considered one of NASA's most ambitious robotic missions. All right, so what did the audit actually find? Well, it's not pretty, folks. They found that MSR is struggling big time to complete its formulation phase, which is when the mission design and plans are supposed to be finalized before full development starts. This capture containment and return system piece I mentioned earlier seems to be the main culprit behind a lot of MSR's headaches. This hardware has experienced numerous technical problems and redesigns as engineers try to get it right. Specifically, CCRS must meet extremely stringent requirements to securely contain the Mars samples once captured, making sure none of the Martian material escapes and contaminates Earth. Some of the solutions NASA tried, like a complex heating system to sterilize the outer layer of the sample capsule, proved too intricate and failure-prone. Coming up with a simplified design took much longer than expected. CCRS was originally supposed to have its preliminary design review, where NASA checks that the hardware design is mature enough to proceed with full production in October 2022. But the report says some critical parts of this review got delayed over and over 
before finally happening in December of just this past year, 2023. And all these CCRS troubles have completely thrown off the entire Mars sample return timeline and budget. NASA is now at least seven months late finishing the initial mission formulation phase when everything else is supposed to be planned out. A major milestone was planned for last August 2023, called Key Decision Point C, or KDP-C. This is when NASA would have officially transitioned MSR from planning into full hardware development. But because of the CCRS delays, KDP-C had to be pushed back to March 2024, at the earliest. And meanwhile, estimated costs for this flagship mission keep ballooning. NASA's earliest cost projection was two and a half to three billion dollars back in 2020. Their latest unofficial estimate is now almost triple that, at 7.4 billion dollars as of mid-2023. Clearly, CCRS has been a serious thorn in the side and major driver of overruns for Mars sample return. So, an obvious question here is, could NASA have avoided these pitfalls on the Mars sample return program if they had better early planning processes? Well, according to the auditors, the answer is yes. They note that inadequate concept development and failure to identify complexity early on has hobbled many of NASA's largest, most ambitious flagship projects before. The report calls out that an internal NASA study back in 2020 actually flagged poor planning practices in pre-formulation phases as a consistent issue. Pre-formulation is when very initial mission feasibility studies happen. But the auditors point out NASA never bothered acting on the recommendations from that 2020 study to improve early planning on complex missions like Mars sample return. So, many of the same problems have persisted, not just with MSR, but other multi-billion dollar flagships NASA tries to take on. Things like underestimating technology readiness early on, pursuing overly intricate mission architectures, not allocating enough mass and power margins. These types of issues stemming from poor upfront conceptual work continue to plague NASA's largest science projects years later. And the cost to fix these problems down the road once hardware is being built or testing has started is an order of magnitude higher. So while beefing up early planning takes more investment on the front end, the auditors argue it could prevent massive delays and cost overruns we're now seeing on Mars sample return. So if super complex technical components like CCRS weren't trouble enough, the Mars sample return team has also faced major headaches working hand in hand with international partners like the European Space Agency. While ESA is handling the development of a key piece of hardware, the Earth Return Orbiter that will retrieve the Mars samples in space and return them to Earth, collaborating on a mission of this scale has been a major challenge across the board. The auditors flag issues in a number of areas when it comes to NASA ESA coordination. Problems aligning schedules and timelines, gaps in sharing detailed progress data that makes integrated planning difficult, lagging alignment on interface designs between different pieces of hardware built by NASA and ESA, and clashes between differing approaches on things like how to handle contractor cost overruns, with ESA generally having less financial flexibility than NASA. So, taking on the immense complexity of Mars Sample Return's one-of-a-kind systems clearly wasn't enough. Meshing with an international partner and their alternative processes has been yet another major hassle. As NASA decides whether to de-scope or potentially delay this ambitious program because of all the cost and schedule growth, it will have to carefully weigh impacts to relationships with partners like ESA. Shared missions of this astronomical expense and long timelines are extremely tricky to pull off. And, once again, a lot of experts argue having better collaboration models in place for mega projects before dozens of contracts are signed and hardware is well underway could mitigate some of these international struggles we see time and time again on NASA flagships. At its core, the audit reveals just how incredibly complex and risky these multi-billion NASA flagship missions truly are. Mars sample return is ambitious, 
pushing technology to the bleeding edge to pull off never-before-seen space operations. And the stakes couldn't be higher for such a long-lived, intricate program spanning over a decade. With ballooning cost projections and delays piling up, the auditors argue MSR and programs like it underline how seemingly small technical issues can completely derail enormous investments down the road. Things haven't looked this dicey for the sample return plan in decades. Among their main recommendations to NASA leaders weighing MSR's future, number one, stabilize component design before promising unrealistic cost or schedule estimates again. Number two, account for complexity better when totaling up budgets and timelines. And number three, provide decision makers multiple options like de-scoping abilities or backup launch plans. Basically, nail down what's truly achievable both technologically and dollar-wise. Then commit to that path. No more pie-in-the-sky dreams for multi-billion dollar flagships. No matter how NASA proceeds with Mars sample return itself, the report is a sobering reality check on just how hard these frontier-pushing mega-missions are to successfully pull off, from ambitious start to triumphant finish. And when we step back and look at the billions invested, the thousands of people involved, and over a decade of effort needed to complete these massive flagship programs, is it any wonder problems stack up between political priority shifts, budget changes, contractor delays, complexity underestimation, and good old-fashioned engineering snags? So much can go wrong over 10-plus years. Mars Sample Return's checkered history so far fits a repeating pattern of poor early planning and collaboration hurting NASA megaprojects down the road. The issues managing partnership schedules, advancing cutting-edge tech, they routinely balloon costs and stretch timelines. A prime case study is the James Webb Telescope. Early technical issues, like major cost overruns and schedule delays stemming from avoidable mistakes in initial planning and design, forced several major restructurings. Ultimately, the James Webb Space Telescope ended up with a 95% budget increase and nearly eight years behind schedule, requiring extra infusions from other NASA projects and international partners alike. Rushed contracting and poor upfront assessments of new mirror and sunshield technology complexity came back to bite big time. Likewise, the Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope saw its life cycle budget double to $6 billion before NASA ultimately canceled it in 2020, underestimating prototype sensitivities and believing it could reuse mostly pre-existing tech. Set WFISRT behind the eight ball from the start. And going way back, the International Space Station racked up 300% expense growth in its early days, plus three extra years of construction from technical snafus and international coordination issues alike. Early assembly and long-duration deep space habitation proved far trickier in reality than NASA and partners envisioned or planned for on paper early on. The connecting thread is failure to accurately grasp never-been-done complexity, combined with the immense grinding marathon managing global megaprojects over decades inevitably becomes. MSR now risks falling into this costly pattern of too little mission unknowns mitigation up front before the mountain gets too steep mid-ascent. Let's hope some course corrections get this ambitious sample return back towards an eventual peak. Sure. The science gains from flagships like MSR seem worth the headaches. Building the rocket factories on Mars, bringing asteroid fragments to lunar orbit, drilling into icy moons. The discoveries could rapidly reshape our place in the cosmos. But as the auditor report highlights, unless NASA gets better at managing unproven systems, complexity creep, and international relationships early, they risk joining a casualty list of once promising missions that never delivered on their boundless potential. Rising costs, delays, and political wins can prematurely clip the most ambitious wings. Perhaps victories like Perseverance and Artemis I will give us hope. With enough care, creativity, and patience, NASA's biggest dreams may still one day land. The seeds are planted. Now, 
can the missions finally bloom. The ingredients have never aligned before to bring pristine Mars rocks to Earth. But as NASA malls delaying or even canceling this program without a major reboot, it highlights just what a Herculean feat these flagship attempts still remain decades in. Buckle up, folks. I have a feeling that MSR roller coaster still has plenty of twists ahead. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Should NASA pursue sample return at all costs, or rein in missions that ballooned 5x their original budget? What about partners like ESA? Does NASA need a more collaborative approach? Looking forward to chatting with you all. Don't forget to crush that subscribe button and ring the bell for the next juicy NASA story. This is the Space Technician signing off for now, and I'll see you Space Cowboys in the next one.